today we're going to take you through a tour of my gym. So if you look behind me, this is my gym that I opened almost 2015. Almost, damn, how many years ago? Eight years ago? Nine years ago? That's actually the door of the old gym. I just need to replace it. But if you are in the San Jose area, you probably drove through here. So let me, let me take you through what this location looks like now. If you're ever interested in opening your own gym or just building out your own gym, this video's for you. Let me show you around. So that's our logo. Kind of a mixture of Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, Goku goes KO Ken, Super Saiyan Blue. We got a little cardio equipment here. Ski ergs are great, especially if you have some knee ankle issues, but you still want to get some cardio on. Ski ergs are awesome. We have one row machine. I'm trying to get another one. Um, assault treadmill, curved treadmill, manual treadmill. Those are the best. Actually forces you to like run correctly. Got a few arcade games. People while they're waiting for classes. But yeah, this is so, here, let me show you the other area. So this is pretty much the gist of the gym. A lot of open space. We have a back area, um, but kind of don't want to show the back area right now. It's a little too messy. But <laughs> this is kind of the open space that we have. We have dumbbells, we have benches. We have this reverse hyper, great for low back stuff. Um, but this open gym space, our business model is more personal training, uh, semi-private stuff, and, uh, and small group classes. So we really prioritize open space. And if you look over here, we actually got the floors done by play, and they're actually pretty nice. Um, I mean, they got, they got our logo. And this is like basically a vinyl printout that they did for us. Shout out to Rudy and the people at play. And uh, we're looking to hopefully one day, not hopefully, we will soon upgrade the squat racks to, to make sure that they're, uh, they're fitting for each uh, platform. Uh, this is like the first squat rack I ever bought for the gym. It's called the Sornex. They called it the Beast. At one point, was it called the beast? It was something else. Or maybe I called it the beast rack. Um, barbells are big. If you're looking to open a gym or building your own gym, um, barbells are a big thing, if you, especially if you're into strength training, lifting. I didn't know this. Like back in, <laughs> back in the day, I just thought barbell was a barbell, but there's, you know, rogue barbells basically definitely made a name for themselves. Um, you know, with their power bar right here, but you can't go wrong with the Alico bar. Come on, look at that, bruh. The Alico bar, I got, I got this. I need to buy more of these, but those are, the goal is to have all Alico bars, right? But that's like a thing. I mean, the SS, the Elite FTS, those are great. Those are great bars. And the difference is the type of steel, it has the quality of it, the way it lasts, how it spins, especially if you're doing weightlifting like Olympic weightlifting, like the snatch and clean jerk, you want, you want a nice, fast, um, spinning, spinny bar, a little bit of whip. Uh, but if you're like powerlifting more, you want more of a stiffer bar. See, I didn't know any of this. I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know that, that, was all, that all mattered until I started opening a gym on my own. Uh, cable machine is definitely a must right here. We get, we get what we need done with a cable machine. Uh, or they call it functional trainer. So yeah, and then this is, this is a, a art piece that a good friend of mine did for us. She also did the logo that you saw firsthand uh, in the beginning, but this is pretty much how we uh, operate as a small training studio in San Jose, California. And you know, we have our, our front desk here and all that, don't mind the mess. But uh, we have like two bathrooms, each have a shower, big TV. Flow water's cool. I'll give you some insight on flow water. They, they tie you into this five-year agreement contract where you're just, I mean, the water tastes great, but once you lock in, you're in for five years, you're paying like monthly payments. We actually got done with our agreement. 
and they're asking us to like renew again, and I kind of don't want to. I just kind of want to do a month to month, so we'll see if we even have to replace that thing. But building a gym in San Jose is not, it's not the cheapest. Uh, in the beginning, I had no money. Uh, <laughs> I actually had, well, that's a lie. I had some money, but not a lot of money. And, and uh, yeah, it was about, and I tell this story a lot, but like now, like eight years later, we actually have a full staff, but in the beginning, we, we rented a warehouse and uh, it was just a lot of, like I had like one black mat in that squat rack, and that's all I had, and that's, uh, that's all we did. And I, only, I had $5,000 in cash, and I, I put that as our first month and deposit for the space, and then I had to ask a couple of my clients to pay a year up front to get money for the equipment and I also bought equipment from like uh, from from the hills and all that stuff from like basically used equipment but in the Bay Area man it, it was tough you know and, and I, I was lucky to find the space and if you're looking to open up your own gym I would allocate at least 50k for a space that's around 1500 square feet I started with 2000 square feet um, and that was okay for what we were doing. We were doing a lot of small group classes, powerlifting. But if you're looking for personal training, like open up your own personal training studio, I'd be 1,500, 1,000 to 1,500 is great to start with, um, and at least 50,000. I maxed out all my credit cards when I opened up my space too. So on top of the $5,000 cash, I, got, I, got a, I maxed out all my credit cards uh, to acquire things. I asked a couple of my clients uh, to pay up front. So I probably shelled out, yeah, 45 to 50K total and it took me a while to kind of recover from that. Because even then, you, like when you open a gym, I highly suggest like you go into your, you, you, you go into your um, systems. You have to figure out a system and, and what it looks like on, on like how to intake clients and what's your POS system and how much are you charging? What are your margins? How much are you paying your employees? What does the client journey look like? This is all the stuff I didn't know when I was opening a gym. So if you're like interested, if you're watching this and you're interested in opening a gym, I'm basically giving you kind of like how it started for me. And, and especially going pushing through the pandemic, we had to do all like the working outside and doing the Zoom classes and, and online programming. But you know, it was, it was a lot, I mean, it was a lot. And uh, we were fortunate enough to, to keep it going, have our clients and our team support us. And now we're able to, um, now we're able, we actually expanded uh, I knew the I knew the landlord and the family here, and he actually owned a gym before this, and they were actually doing a transition in their model. And he said, "Hey, Austin, I got a space open if you want to check it out." And I, you know, looked around and we started we started small, man. Like we didn't even have these floors. Like these floors, let me show you. These floors right here. This is this is like professional flooring now. But man, even even then we didn't have I didn't have, we just had stall mats. We had a fuck ton of stall mats. Um, we had a lot of other stuff, a lot of old equipment that we were trying to, uh, we were trying to upgrade. And we, we moved all the stuff that we had in the, in the first gym over here and got rid of a lot of old stuff and put in a lot of new stuff. And maybe even halfway through my journey, I had to partner up, had some great business partners, um, help me kind of understand the lay of the land of the, bit, of like the business world. And you'd be surprised how, how business is done you know, as in this capitalistic society of, of people wanting, you know, to, to pursue their dream and be their own boss. And it's a lot. It's a, I feel like, not feel, I know that you have to have a ton of emotional maturity when you want to manage people and you want to lead people. And I truly believe a ton, a majority of small business fail because of lack of capital. That's like, a, I think that, that's a fact. But another part is the lack of leadership skills, lack of you know, people leading, being able to be emotional, uh, being able to be empathetic, compassionate to the people that you're leading. Because, of course, it's it's hard. We we as a small business owner, you're 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 dancing that fine line of trying to pay your people enough to to at least have some type of decent wage, right? But if you have a high cost of living area, you gotta you gotta raise your prices so you can meet that margin you make that margin better because you, you do want to turn a profit, but you also also want to reinvest in your business to further grow it. 
and retain talent. And on top of that, you got to pay yourself a little bit. You know, I'm not saying I'm not sitting here saying I'm a fucking Elon Musk and, you know, we're making millions of dollars now. Like, of course, that's what everyone wants to do, especially in Silicon Valley, but the startup life, right? You want to build up, get all that seed funding and then sell and sell your position and come out on top. And now you're looked at as like the next Steve Jobs. But if you're a small business owner, it's a grind. It's a grind. And if you're looking to open up your own gym, it's it's a grind and a half. It's a grind and a half. So, yeah, and, you know, again, if you watch my other videos, again, I just, I just make these vlogs because it's very therapeutic to me. It kind of gets my thoughts organized. And if anyone's going through the same thing, I hope to connect with you. I hope you, like, to, to make you feel that you're not alone. Because you're not. If you're in this, if you're planning to open a gym or doing something brick and mortar, it is a grind. Everyone nowadays wants to do a lot of online stuff building their own app and what have you. Cool. You still need to build it with a team. You still need to people manage, lead the people, and understand what drives them and understand why you're doing what you're doing as far as building a company. And I'm just very fortunate to even be here by myself because everyone, we, we just got done shooting a great uh, content piece for our, you know, marketing, social media stuff. We had a production guy come in. Uh, camera guy with his all this stuff. It was it's gonna be some high-end stuff. I'm pretty excited. Great energy. A lot of clients came out to to do it, and a lot of coaches came out to help. And it was it was a great community. But I, I mean, I sat back there watching everyone. Everyone's so connected and happy and together. It's it's like one of those things that when you open up a gym, a lot of a lot of owners when when they open up specifically gym owners when they open up their own space, whether it be a CrossFit or you know boot camp or personal training or you know martial arts, you want that sense. You want to create a sense of community because I truly feel like you're striving for a sense of purpose. So much for me. I'm speaking for myself. So I mean, but correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, like, please comment below. Let me know. Um, but. I feel like it gives you a strong sense of purpose that you're bringing people together, you're bringing joined people's lives, and you're also helping them be healthier. And it's like the, it sounds weird, but fitness is one of the most honest things you can sell, as long as it doesn't get all weird, like spammy, like, oh yeah, buy our 90 day program and get shredded to the nines. But like, if you're just generally like, Hey, you need guidance, you know, we can help you. And obviously you're gonna you gotta pay for that guidance, you gotta pay for service, but who who doesn't wanna get paid to to do something that they love? Like coaches, they want you gotta pay for your time. I think everyone could agree with that. Like if you're gonna do something for someone other than like unless you want to give them your time, there get there gets to a certain point where you're like, I need I need to get paid for my time, man. And and that's that happy balance when you're you know, you're selling training or small group class experience, semi private or just casual coaching. I, I think it's a great happy medium and a great realm to be in as long as you're as long as you're doing it right. And you know, clients aren't stupid. People aren't stupid. They'll they'll see right through it. So if you're watching this and your goal is to, you know, opening up a gym and um, and um, and do all that, it's a uh, it's a people first type of company, man. It's it's service based. And that means that means it's it's a lot of connecting and making sure the people are coming in. So this is, and this is how you know, we've built it. I mean, the title of this video is going to be, "How I Opened Up My Gym for with with only five thousand dollars or something like that." I don't know. I'll probably name it something like that. Um, but it's more than that. It's definitely more than that. But I opened it like if you really want to know the notes and bolts of all that, I, you know, found a found a space. Signed the lease, found the rent, no projections, uh, paid my first and, <laughs> and my deposit, and uh, personal guaranteed it. Didn't even know what the hell that meant at the time, but I personally guaranteed the fucking, fucking place, and I built it from scratch, and I had, I had 30 clients. I had 30 people, because they're, they're friends and family that really wanted to help me out, and, and I signed them up at $99 a month for like, for like the small group classes, and I had clients paying me way more, about a, like 1000 a month or something for for personal training and then a little bit in between that for semi-private and I, that's where I started. And then I slowly started hiring people. I started hiring like my sister-in-law, her boyfriend, my brother, which is a double-edged sword in itself because it's hard to work with family, but you know, you gotta work with what you have. And then I slowly grew from there, but it, what really helped me kind of push everything through and make those months where I barely had enough for payroll, but I did it, or barely had enough to, I didn't, wasn't even paying myself for the first five years, because I just kept reinvesting it, but 
it was the community, man. It was people who wanted to generally come out and support. And I feel like if you're in the gym space and you want to open something like that, you got to have at least 10 to 15 diehard people. You can even go five, just five diehard clients who really want to help you out because that's where it starts and it grows from. And, and yeah. And the, and the crazy thing is, like, whatever, the team that you start, the people that you start your company with are not the people that you're going to be with five, ten years down the road, because it's going to change. It's going to evolve. People grow. People move on. But, you know, I'm blessed because when we do our one year or five year, six year, we just had our seven year, no, eight year anniversary. People who were in the, people who were here in the beginning, they came out to support. And that's, that's a long lasting relationship type of thing. And that's, that's where it gets deep. So, and that's where it makes it worth it. And now I could probably say I, I you know, I give myself like a, a decent wage. I have coaches who make way more than I do. Uh, because they're here, they're training, but now I have time to be with my son. And that was the whole point of opening this gym is to create a lifestyle where I can, I don't have to kill myself all the time. And not to say my trainers fucking kill themselves and I'm having them work fucking 16 hour days, but I allow them to work as much as they want, as little as they want, and understanding that that's, you know, that, that dictates how much they get paid and all that. But it is enough where they can have a balance and that's, that's what it is. It's all about balance. And I'm still working. I still love to work. I still love coming into the gym, talking to my team and moving the needle, figuring out what, you know, I'm taking in their feedback, figuring out what we can do together as a business, as a gym. What's our culture? Like, what's our culture code? What do we want? Who do we want? Who, we, who do we want as a staff member? Who do we want as a client? What are, what's working for us? What's not? And they give it to me straight. And that's, that's the beauty of it. I love working here. But at the end of the day, I have time in the morning and the middle of the day to be with my son to do certain things. And yeah, there's gonna be times where I need to work and you know, do all that and he needs to be watched by his grandparents or babysitter, but it's, it's not as crazy how, how it used to be. Cause I'm growing up, it was a lot of, you know, my nana raising me and my brother and my mom and dad were grinding it out. They were working a lot. My dad was a postman, mom was a loan officer. So they had, a, they had nine to five jobs, both of them. And you know, back then maternity leave was shit. Or, <laughs> you know, they no one cared in the 80s, so they just kept working. So it was a lot of my, like hanging out with my grandma. So one of the biggest parts was finding time for my, for my kid and to do that. And we're doing that now. And it's crazy. So if you made it this far, thank you. Thank you for hearing me out. Um, and I appreciate that. And um, I hope to, you know, if you're, you've been watching my vlogs, I, I appreciate you. And it's just sharing, again, life lessons for my son who eventually hopefully could watch this and I don't even know if I'm gonna have more future kids and I'm just gonna change the title but it's uh I, I do appreciate your time thanking you for for watching this and I hope what you what you saw here what you you know what you watch what you experience I hope it helps you in your journey in whatever you're trying to do open up your own business open up your own gym business there's a reason why you clicked here and um, I just truly hope it it does propel you in your quest and whatever you're doing and I hope you do well and um don't forget to, don't forget to follow, like, subscribe. But <laughs> if, if you truly enjoy my content, it would, it would, I'd appreciate it if you follow, if you like, because there's going to be more. Um, I'm going to document more stuff that's just going on, what I feel is relevant to what I'm trying to build here. And I appreciate you being part of the journey. So, yeah, here's to the next video.